This is a project for a tracking generator for HP 8569B spectrum analyzer. Uh, this turns the spectrum analyzer into a uh, scalar network analyzer, which is a device which can uh, plot the uh, frequency versus magnitude response of a, a device that you're testing. Um, it works by tapping the uh, or uh, tracking the uh, first local oscillator output from the spectrum analyzer itself and then mixing it with a frequency which is equal to the uh, IF frequency internal to the uh, spectrum analyzer which is a uh, 2050 megahertz in this case the uh, first local oscillator of the spectrum analyzer uh, is uh, 2060 to uh, 3850 megahertz when uh, only in the uh, 10 to 1800 megahertz uh, selection range which is the uh, this first button, first range on the 8569. Since we're taking that uh, sweeping local oscillator and mixing it with the uh, IF offset, our new output frequency is then equal to the uh, essentially the uh, tuned frequency that the spectrum analyzer is displaying at that moment. So um, if you were to connect this uh, output into like a filter or something, you'd be able to see the response of the filter. Um, ideally, a real tracking generator should have an automatic level control on the uh, output, IF output somewhere, to maintain a, a flat output response. There's a, a trick we can do to bypass that and to uh, make the circuit a little more simple. The most complex thing uh, is programming the uh, uh, oscillator we're going to be using, a mini circuits DSN 2300A. I'm going to use a basic stamp to uh, program the frequency. Here's what the tracking generator looks like. The uh, IF input from the spectrum analyzer comes into this uh, SMA jack right here. I have a 6 dB directional coupler. I tap that off to another front panel SMA. This goes off to a frequency counter so we can measure the actual uh, frequency uh, of the uh, local oscillator at that moment. I have a nice wideband isolator. This kind of um, keeps any uh, uh, of our generated uh, spurs or, or, uh, or IF um, generated carrier from flowing back into the uh, local oscillator input. This, uh, this is an optional device but uh, very handy. The actual mixer I'm using as a uh, ANZAC MD 525. So the uh, local oscillator input coming from the uh, spectrum analyzer. The IF output. I have a 3 dB attenuator, mini, nice mini circuits attenuator. And the uh, RF input. This is the 2050 megahertz carrier. Is uh, via this uh, oscillator board in the back. I found this board oscillator board on eBay, but the uh, it's just a standard uh, mini circuits uh, oscillator that you can. Uh, buy off their website for about forty dollars and then um, the program the mini circus oscillator we're using a basic stamp a homework board which you can buy at uh, Radio Shack um, and the uh, oscillator requires a uh, 12.5 volts so I have a little LM117 uh, voltage regulator to generate that uh, uh, voltage Here's the schematic for the uh, 2050 uh, megahertz carrier. It's just a uh, mini circuits DSN 2300A synthesizer. Uh, the output is around 6 dBm plus 6 dBm. So we uh, add a 10 dB attenuator to knock it down to negative 4 dBm. That'll be the RF input on the mixer. The, uh, basic stamp ports put out 5 volts and the uh, synthesizer requires 3 volt logic levels so we have to have a little voltage or uh, resistor voltage dividers to knock it down from 5 to 3.3 3. Uh, 3. the oscillator does require a 10 megahertz reference oscillator the standard 3 volt CMOS level um, pretty much any uh, 10 megahertz uh, oscillator will work you do want to be able to trim the frequency slightly uh, to uh, track uh, 
filter drifts inside, internal to the uh, spectrum analyzer. And for it needs uh, 5 volts. The synthesizer needs uh, 5 volts, which I'm generating from a standard 5 volt regulator, and then uh, the 12.5 volts. Um, it will work at 12 volts, so you don't need to generate it, but the data sheet says 12.5, so you might as well use 12.5. show you some uh, sweeps of the uh, some local uh, filters and stuff I have to get an idea. Oh, the output the tracking generator is uh, the IF output through the 3 dB attenuator to the front panel and jack. And you can see my this is the local oscillator output from the spectrum analyzer to the local oscillator input right here. And this is the uh, cable right here is the RF input to the spectrum analyzer. Our tracking generator output, spectrum analyzer input. Uh, here's a just an SMA coupler. This is going to be our baseline response. I have the spectrum, analy spectrum analyzer set to uh, 500 megahertz as our center frequency. It's 100 megahertz per division. This is our zero spur right here. That's one gigahertz on the far side right there. Uh, 10 dB uh, per division. There's 5 dB per division. As you can see, there's a little bit of ripple. This is a. Uh, oh, this ripple would be removed by using the automatic level control circuit that just adds you know, unnecessary complexity uh, into our uh, output circuit. And uh, I'll show you a trick we can get around that. Um, Here's a 1 megahertz or 1 gigahertz low pass filter. Hooking up the tracking generator output to one side of the filter and the uh, RF input to the other side. You can see the response of the filter. Now you notice this little bit of ripple. You'd think that's from the uh, filter, but no, that was from our baseline response initially, if you remember. So what you'll do is uh, connect the feed through a uh, uh, SMA coupler to get our baseline. And on this HP8569, there's actually two traces, called the A trace and the B trace. We're going to store blank our B trace. That is our baseline response with the ripple, system ripple. Then when I connect the uh, filter back up again, connected back up. I select the input minus B display on A. You'll see how that eliminated our uh, system ripple. This is the actual response of the uh, device itself. It eliminated the uh, system response. You should uh, do that, you know, every time you change the frequency or change the uh, uh, connectors and stuff. If we go over to the zero span mode and watch the frequency counter, see it's displaying 2.9913 gigahertz. That is the local oscillator output of the spectrum analyzer.
what we can do now is choose an offset frequency of negative 20, 50 megahertz. And now, my that is our center frequency is uh, 941.3 or so uh, megahertz. That's the uh, the exact frequency that would the spectral monitor is tuned to. Um, because since this is still this is not a synthesized uh, spectrum analyzer, it can still drift, you know, in temperature and all that other stuff. But by actually measuring the exact local oscillator frequency coming from the spectrum analyzer on the frequency counter, we can get the uh, uh, exact uh, frequency. Like if you want to, like the 3D points on a uh, filter or something, you can uh, get that exact frequency. That only works when it's in the zero span mode. As you can see, otherwise it just uh, doesn't even register because it's sweeping so fast. I'll show you some quick other things real quick. Uh, this is a bandpass filter for the cellular phone band. Eight uh, thirty megahertz, eight hundred and thirty megahertz, or twenty megahertz wide. You can kind of see how handy having a tracking generator is for a, uh, you know, classifying you know, filters and stuff that you just have laying around. Here's a 2 meter bandpass filter that I have. This is a industrial communication engineer's model 413, 144 to 148 megahertz. You can kind of see the covers the uh, two meter ham band. And what's nice about the tracking generator is you can see this little spike right here um, at around 600 megahertz or so. So if we were using this for uh, knocking down, you know, interference, actually it doesn't work that well up in the 600 megahertz, which is the, uh, some of the digital TV stuff. The actual um, output power of the tracking generator is pretty much arbitrary because you're just uh, you know measuring the uh, DB range from your reference so there's no reason to uh, you know add amplifiers, unnecessary amplifiers or anything to it, you just kinda work from your reference on down